الله أكبر الله أكبر A building becomes a mosque when you give it the dignity and respect that a place of worship needs. A place is not defined by the structure. It is defined by the people and the ideas they have. If you see this mosque from outside, it doesn't really look any different than any other building on the street. It's just bigger. It's obviously a hall of some sort. The Muslim community had actually purchased it in 1989 and converted it into a mosque. But prior to that, it was a church hall that was used by St. Tylo's Church. It was also a scout hall. But when we refurbished it, it of course multiplied the space significantly, which meant that we could have different uses for different parts of the building, like this room, which is a library. It took about three years, I think, to renovate the whole thing. And that was done just with the donations from the community. Externally, not much has been done to the building, but internally, there are some features that we have put in that are sort of, you, you would find them in any mosque around the world. In the main prayer hall, we have a mimbar, which is where the imam, the leader of the prayer, will stand to deliver the sermon on a Friday. Then there's also the prayer niche, and this is also used to indicate the qibla, which is the direction of prayer. It's just literally a little niche, and in front of it is a what looks like a doorway, but it's actually an arrow pointing the direction. Muslims, wherever we are, we face the direction of Mecca when we pray. And so this is something that unifies us all over the world. So in this mosque, when you walk in and you walk into the main prayer hall, you can immediately see where the prayer niche is and you know that that's the direction that you need to pray. This building happens to be, just by chance, orientated towards Mecca directly. So the stripes are parallel with the walls of the building. But in other buildings, you might find them diagonal. We have a place to put shoes away so that we do not walk with shoes within the mosque. We have a place for ritual washing, ablution. And then, of course, we have something which indicates the timings of the prayers. So we have clocks up in both of the main prayer halls that indicate the beginning times for each of the five daily prayers. And it also indicates the beginning time for the Friday sermon. So there's actually six clocks all together as a set underneath a clock that's showing the actual time. The name Dar al-Isra, it translates as the house. Dar is house and al-Isra is the night journey. And a miraculous event that happened in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. It means that we aspire for, for excellence, that we aspire to reach the highest heights of good behavior and good conduct. I think it was one of the first mosques that opened me to Islam. I wasn't very religious a couple of years ago. Thinking back 10, 15 years, I, I, you know, I was a Muslim in name really, but I didn't really practice my faith. And this was my first attendance to this mosque when I started realizing that it was this really nice place where everybody was welcome and nobody was judged. And that sort of grew me more into my faith. I became Muslim 10 years ago um, and I was born and brought up in Cardiff so I guess ever since 10 years ago I've been coming to this mosque. I try and come every fri Friday for the Friday prayers, the, the joint congregational prayers but then you know if I'm around Cardiff and I'm maybe in town or something I need to pray I might pop in here just to come and pray and then go carry on with my day. I would say in Cardiff and in this mosque in particular, the first language of the vast majority of the worshippers is English. Few of them it's Welsh. But in terms of ethnic makeup, it's very diverse. Everyone comes to the mosque. He feels he's coming to his home. And we have all nationalities. When I came first time, I see or I feel they are very friendly and they are welcoming. And uh, it was a good opportunity for me because I'm a foreigner here, I don't know anybody, so I like to, to join them. Another sort of Purely for modesty purposes, men and women will pray in separate spaces because it would be distracting, because you're literally shoulder to shoulder. Ihsan, Allah ordered you for everything beautiful. 
As Muslims were taught that you can't practice your religion properly if you're isolated, that it is a congregational religion. Improve your life. Ya'amurukum bil adli. Allah is ordering you to be a just. Allah is ordering you to have justice in your life. The mosque is the place where everybody congregates together to worship God. Allahu Akbar. So it's really an intrinsic part of the practice of the faith. It's not exactly mosque for prayer only. If you call it mosque, so it is mosque for, uh, for everything. We call it Islamic center or community center. Fortunately, the people who have been using Darul Isra have a broader understanding of worship, that it should meet also the uh, cultural and social needs of the congregation. A mosque has got multiple features and multiple functions that it provides. Prayer is only a part of it. As you know, during Ramadan, we had 12,000 brothers and sisters attending throughout the months. Not only Muslims. We have the management team and the administrative team, and I'm part of the administrative team, so we oversee just the day-to-day -day operations of the mosque. We have study circles, and because we are trying to work with the broader agenda, we have study circles not only for men, which traditionally mosques have, we have study circles for women, we have study circles for young men, young women, and children. Specifically, this mosque, uh, there are more open uh, opportunities for us. Most of the team here are women, actually. They give us uh, chances to work with them and to improve. They give us opportunities for men and women, both uh, equal chances. If you have got a broader community function, then you cannot do it only through old men. You have to include children, you have to include boys and girls, and you have to include women. So that was uh, uh, probably the, on the third session we figured that out. As a woman who's converted to Islam, I feel that Islam empowers me incredibly. As a woman who is Muslim who participates in this particular mosque, I feel that this mosque really understands well how Islam empowers women and it works within that. I think the timing of when the mosque was built has a lot to do with this because a lot of mosques in the UK were sort of built in the 1950s, 1960s, and they're just, the, the women hadn't come over yet. This mosque being built more recently and being established more recently, and plus it was established by students who had come with their families. So automatically their families needed somewhere to pray. So from the get-go, it was a very inclusive space. So you're gonna have a couple of games today. You provide the mosque as a functional basis for children. You've provided for teenagers, you've provided for the elderly and for the adults. And every age group has got different interests. If you touch it, then you leave it. We run tuition classes for secondary school children, physics, maths, biology, English. We teach Arabic, so we run classes for children, for adults, whoever wants to learn. And then we also have Quran classes for children and adults to learn how to read the Quran properly. It might be an adopted building, but then you have to remember, there's a lot of things that can be done in this mosque. I've attended weddings in this mosque, and I've attended funerals in this mosque. So it is an all-purpose-built building which accommodates to the need of everybody in the community. The other day, a white man with a lot of tattoos, he was inside and going upstairs and downstairs, then I came. And he helped. He said, yes, I'm looking for somebody to take my donation. I want to help this place, you know. And he's not a Muslim. We have multi-faith events, which are uh, taking place regularly every quarter, every three months. We usually uh, host 150 to 170 from different religion background. We have a speech given by Muslim and Jewish and the Christian as well. I'm a volunteer here. I'm not a Muslim. I come to this mosque at least once a week, either for a public lecture or to tutor secondary school children in English. This, from my experience, it's almost a community hub. 
There are open days held here quite frequently for primary school children and also some secondary school children where people can experience being in a mosque. Last Ramadan we had a sharing Ramadan program. We host 120 non-Muslim guests. They come and experience how the Muslim fast and how we break fast. A great opportunity to make uh, our Muslim community fully integrated on the bigger uh, Welsh society. We believe we are a Welsh centre for everybody, not only for Muslims. Food recycling is a concern, collecting food for homeless people is a concern, then how we support refugees is a concern. And these are broader issues besides pure worship. If, of course, uh, you try to change things too quickly, the mosque elders get very anxious. You can do a lot without rocking the boat. A lot of us uh, over here, we have done things quietly and moved things forward. This is our society. If anything is hurt in this society, there will be no differentiation between you and me and him, and so all of us are responsible. We have a win-win situation. We are, we are able to have this dialogue, which encourages the young, which encourages women, which encourages young men, while at the same time, we are able to look after the needs of the very old.